Good day, BookTube. It's Tuesday, which means it's Tag Tuesday, quite famously. And I have the pleasure of being tagged in a newly created tag uh, by Heather Reed, who has a wonderful channel that you should follow. Um, and the new tag is titled In Your Wildest Dreams. So I will read the prompts below. Oh, and also, because it's worth mentioning, uh, previous new tags from Heather Reed are the I Heart Booktube tag and the Outside the Cover Story tag, which you should check out as well. But these are the prompts for the In Your Wildest Dreams tag. In as much detail as you can, describe these things. One, your fantasy time and place to read a book. Uh, for me, this is a really easy one. Any time and anywhere I damn well please. I resent having to work for a living. I resent when I am reading being interrupted by things. Don't get me wrong. Love my children. Love my family. But everybody knows this sensation, I think, more or less. Or an effect thereof from a friend or family member. You get settled. You get your book out. You make a start. And then, I don't know, somebody asks you to pass them something or get them something. Or, have you seen my keys? Or... Can I have a drink? Whatever it is, there's always something that seems to... I spend a lot of time sitting down, beginning reading, and then resuming beginning reading. So the fantasy for me would just be... It's, prob it's probably not going to kick in until retirement, because even when we go on holiday, it's a family holiday, and there's still kids to look after, things to do, activities to do, or at home there's chores to do, whatever it is. There's... As people will know with small children and whatnot, there seems to be a never-ending pile of washing. They never reuse the same cup, even if they're putting the same juice in it that they just poured in five minutes ago. They need a new cup for this one, and it just it just adds up. So the fantasy is whenever and wherever I want without interruption. Two, your fantasy personal library. Brackets. Or your personal library, if you have attained your fantasy. Um, so, so I've shared on a community post recently. So the bookcase now is double-sided, more or less, with some shelves that are still three deep, which is just unavoidable for the number of books. But we went through and did a bit of a sort out. Condensed some space. So the grey box is new, which now houses all the jigsaw, the kids' jigsaws that were there, which are now all taken out of their boxes and put in Ziploc bags which was my wife's idea. She'd seen some wear, which is brilliant because it saves a load of space. Um, so I have a personal library and it's of a more than reasonable enough size for me. It's, I don't know, 500, 600 books, something like that probably. And yeah, I've still got, uh, so the cube, I don't know if I can point to it, this one is my don't get me wrong, there are books in other cubes that I've still not read as well, but they're grouped together with the rest of them by themes, like the Black Penguin, uh, Black Spine Penguins are all together, even though there's a couple in there that I haven't read yet. But, yeah, I think I've got enough for what covers me. I, obviously, I'd love something like an actual library room and I'd just have a single, single shelf deep walls of books, because it would be my own space then, but... I think I'm pretty much there in terms of having the, the that fantasy element completed. I have the space. These are all my books. There's a small section for some kids' books, but they, my two daughters have got their own little bookshelves in the room with most of their books. These are just some of the more... Uh, I don't know if collectible is the right term, but just... Books that they're probably not quite there yet with, or... I don't know, actually, because these probably could be in my eldest daughter's room, most of these, but... For whatever reason, whatever the breakdown is, some of them are just there on the shelf, which is fine. Question three. Imagine you've decided to build a bookshop. What would you call it? Would it sell new or second-hand books? Would it sell anything else? What features would you want in that shop? Um, would it sell anything else? Um, I don't think it probably would sell anything else. Because... Some some stuff, like bookmarks maybe, the actual book related things, like bookmarks or book lights and stuff like that, I, I get, but not, I don't know if I go into like the knick-knack element of some bookshops where it's like mugs and stuff like that, I don't know, tote bags maybe, saying that, I probably should say tote bags because I have a 
tote bag from Book House down south, which is quite a nice tote bag, which I use for my... In fact, I'll show you. <laughs> so at the moment, it's all bundled up, but I have uh, from Book House, if I'm pronouncing it right. I don't know if it's just being quirky or if it is actually, I don't know, uh, Central European or something like that. But I've got a uh, Foresight Saga in there, Defilo Bublon, and Paris by Hope Merleys, whose name I do remember now. And I forgot the other day in a video, which was embarrassing, but yeah, which is a, uh, oh, what's the word? A narrative pun. So far, um, which I'm very slowly making my way through. Not doing it justice, really. But anyway, I digress. Um, it would be a second-hand bookshop because there's so much to read that's already come out. And really, really, actually how... I think there is enough stuff that has already existed, that's already been published, and what remains that we can get access to Though we may have lost gems along the way, can't disagree with that. Gems have been lost along the way, but there is enough good in the back catalogue that I think it only exceptionally good current books are worth discussing. So much of the current book scene that I see th through bits on BookTube, or if I do read sporadically things like the TLS or whatever it is, so many new books just sound shit. <laughs> they really do sound utterly awful. They sound very pandering. They don't sound like they're very challenging at all. It just it just seems... I suppose it's the downside of living in the age of content for content's sake. That's the problem. Everybody's got a take on something. And everybody's take should count. And it's like, no, some of you are actually just outright wrong. But anyway, I'm digressing again. It will be second-hand books. We've established we only sell a few things. What would I call my second hand bookshop? Um, oh, I mean, no matter what would I call, I don't know actually. It's a tough question on the spot because uh, I'd seen it been noticed in the tag, but I, I don't know what I'd call it. I mean, the other day we went to Speak Hall, which is a National Trust property. Uh, a place that's managed by the National Trust. And so it's in a place called Speak, S-P-E-K-E. And their on-site second-hand bookshop is called Speaks Volumes, which is just spectacular. Just spectacular. It's a pun on the place. It's a pun on the fact they sell books. It's a pun on the expression. I mean, it's great. <laughs> it's absolutely great. Um... I would probably, try, now that I think about it, because I've always loved people who seem to know about books physically, seem to be okay with the fact that their fold-outs are called French flaps. It needs to be somebody who's not book-centric. They seem to be weirded out by that. I'm incredibly baffled. So I might try and be very obtuse and... Possibly call it French flaps, but translate it into French. Oh, I don't, I don't know what that would be. I don't know what it would be. Hang on, I'll see if I can. I've got my computer here. So let's actually go on Google Translate. Let's see if it even sounds good. It may sound like utter nonsense. We want to go from English to France. France. French. Too many crickets. I don't know why I'm doubling in French. I can't even speak English. Volet Francais? Not bad. Not bad. Oh, that translates back to French shutters. Um, I don't want to say I don't want to say French shutters. What's a f what's just flap? As in, what's rabat? Oh, I give up. Anyway, it'd be something along those lines. I'm not I'm not wasting your time while I witter on bloody Google Translate trying to figure it out. Yeah, so that will do it for. Oh, sorry, what features would you want in that shop? Features? Um, I don't know. Spiral staircase could be nice. Ladders that slide across. That's something I've always wanted. I don't know what they're called. And uh, dotted around those multifunctional chairs. 
that look like a chair but fold out to become step ladders or a small set of steps. I think those are quite cool. So a few of those, mainly furniture things. Point four. One person, not a booktube creator, with whom you can have a good conversation about books. If you don't know a person like this, who do you know that you wish would become a reader so that you could talk books with them? Um, I actually have this. So my uncle is a retired teacher and he has a he has a personal library room in his house. He's probably got about eight plus thousand books throughout his house, but he actually has a library room, which is brilliant to be in. It's got wing back chairs next to the fire. Very aesthetically pleasing as a room to sit and read in. Um, and I always have good conversations with him about books uh, all the time because he's quite well read. And yeah, it's a different perspective because he's much older than I am. So obviously he's got he's got more years on me in terms of reading, but has also read people who I'm currently reading who have actually like fallen out of favour. It's like with the angry young men, he's actually aware of most of them because he was, you know, the, those authors were more prevalent in the time when he was growing up. Um, and then point five: if you won a million dollars brackets or pounds or yen or euros etc and you could only spend it on books or book related items how would you spend it um i would probably flesh out firstly i'd i'd actually have a library room that's the that's the i suppose that'd be the first thing to commission really wouldn't it with a million uh available to you to spend uh build the space to have it and then fully pursue everything that i've not been able to pursue yet if that makes sense and make sure the room is suitable for longevity so in terms of like there's proper air circulation there's no damp or you know muskiness oh, not muskiness mustiness that will get in and yeah I'd probably I don't I think you could go through it quite quickly so for example if you can see it here, so that George Orwell book is the is it Secker and Warburg? It's like the complete unadulterated George Orwell in some spectacular number of volumes. I think it's twenty odd plus maybe or something like that. There's quite a lot of them. But uh I've missed the boat on that completely. So even though it would have been expensive to, as an outlay when it was new, I think now they go for like collector's prices. So I think you could probably actually rack up a lot of money just acquiring the additions you wish to have so i'd probably potentially upgrade books where i could to folio society and every man's library because they're just they're, just they're very good quality books the paper stock's really good the binding's really good they're nice to look at nice to feel nice to hold and I don't know if I had a million, I suppose it would, oddly, I'm not sure now, thinking about it, because I think if you had the money and it was just, just folio after folio, if folio society became your standard, then I suppose in a sad sense, it would devalue those books, because they're just commonplace for you, and it's not, it's not a special, like for me, a folio society book is a special acquisition, Um, I don't have very many of them and they're expensive but they're nice collector's pieces so that's that's a tricky one that so i'm not sure. but you know what i mean I'd, I, would, I would do that i'd probably get the entire as much as i could of like a faber and faber's poetry releases because they do a wonderful range of poetry um i'd finish off first i'd get all of the um the angry men and fully flesh out my reading of all those authors involved. Especially because some of them I had to... I just recently had to cancel uh, Happy as Larry by Thomas Hind. It's very expensive. And I tried requesting it through the library at work. But the request has sat there for months. I presume because they can't get hold of it. Because it was like a limit, a very limited run of a book from the 1950s. So I suppose it makes sense that they don't have access do have ready access to a comment of it. And it's a leisure reading book request. They're not going to plonk down 
50 or 60 pounds for little old me for a book that might get read once, which it would do because it's a library book. I'm going to read it, hand it back, maybe return to it at a later point in time, but really it's a big expense for not much use. Um, so yeah, so definitely build a book room, flesh out the collections I've got in the editions I want. Um, and I'd actually, uh, uh, oh, what's it got? Uh, the Portico Library in the centre of Manchester, uh, which sits atop the pub called The Bank, but I believe they've bought it back recently and they're now going to change it into a, the whole building back into a library. So that's very exciting. But they do a book sponsorship thing, so they have lots of old, original runs of books that are kind of falling apart and very worn by time and use. And you can sponsor or... Sponsor? Is that the right way to describe it? I suppose it is sponsoring. You can sponsor individual books and help contribute towards the renovations of those books so they can be repaired and brought back into a good quality and last hundreds of years more. So I, I do that with a fair few books. Plus, your name gets stamped in them, and I was quite intrigued by the idea that as the contribu contributor, your name goes in it. And because it's such an established place, it buys you a little bit of longevity you know to have a bit of immortality of your name will live on like outside of your family or whatever it's like i've stamped a fair few of the inside of my books from a book stamp but so these books might go into circulation and some of them i don't know may last a considerable amount of time into the future but I figure it's somewhere like the portico that's gonna that's gonna outlast even my books because like the like the angry young men books they're from the 50s they're, they're not in a good state they're not in a good state they're paperbacks from the 50s and 60s and 70s so they're already kind of like getting a bit, you know, ramshackle and whatnot. But that is it for the prompts for the tag. It was a very good tag, Heather. Thank you for tagging me in it. I will upload this video and I need to find a suitable picture for the front. Um, And yeah, I will uh, tag other booktubers in the comment section below. Off the top of my head, I can't think of everybody's names, but I will draw up a suitable list and I'll wait to see how you take it from there. But thank you booktube, have a good day.